Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 70. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 8 or the PowerPoints for chapter 8, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, this video, we're going to start uh, looking at all of the investment criteria. So far, we've just looked at net present value. And why? Because it's the best one. Nevertheless, there are other ways that people or other criteria that people have something known as the payback rule, counting rates of return, internal rate of return, profitability index. We'll look at all of those one at a time. We're going to start by looking at net present value and then compare it to our questions we asked at the beginning. Any good uh, decision criteria for capital budgeting will answer the question yes, 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 three times. Does the decision rule adjust for the time value of money? Does the decision rule adjust for risk? Does the decision rule provide information about whether we're creating value for the firm? All right, actually here, this, this slide right here, uh, we're looking at a new project and we've estimated these numbers. We have cash flows and we have some accounting information. Net income for the three periods and average book value, we'll use that for the average accounting return. Uh, and we're going to use this information for uh, and for each one of our examples for investment criteria, we're going to start with net present value. I'm going to go over to Excel. Here are our projected cash flows and our internal rate of, I'm sorry, the required rate of return. This is the one that they determine inside the firm. And we're going to calculate our net present value. We do our period rate. Ours is annual, comma, and just list all the cash flows. Do I go like this? No way. Cash flow zero is not allowed in the net present value. It assumes that the cash flows start at period one and go out. So we have our three cash flows, close parentheses, and then we plus because we have a negative up here. So that'll tell us whether we have positive net present value or negative. And it looks like at this particular discount rate, this particular risk level, we have. 4,280, right? So for using the net present value criteria, we'd say, yes, we should take this project. Now, the advantage to net present value, which none of the other ones uh, have, is it answers yes to all three questions. This rule adjusts for the time value of money. We've discounted uh, at this rate here. Rule adjusts for risk. The uh, risk would be inside of the required rate of return or discount rate. Inside the firm, they would determine that. And the rule provides information on whether we're creating value. Yes, we are. All right, um, in our next couple of videos, we'll look successively at the payback rule and some of the other criteria. See you next video.